So they bust in probably. Okay. We have a uh, quorum of uh, online people and people in the room, but we will get our meeting started this morning. Um, do attendance in a second here. Uh, in fact, why don't we start that now? We'll do attendance. Let's start. Uh, Jim, why don't you start down that corner? Jim Kennard, Facilities Construction. John Trasher, Cork. Bill Huckel, Cork. Ken Lasseter, Cork. Lou Doctor, Cork. Bob Bliss, Officer Director General. David Porter, Cork. Uh, Dave Dolan, Deputy Chief Facilities Management. Holly Hahn, Office of the General Counsel. Julie Edwards, PGAL. Uh, Mike Thomas with the White's Company. John Levinson, Rell Enterprises, representing Zescovich Architects and Warden Smith. Just from Contrio, Cardo Construction. Okay. Um, do we need to do that for our online people, Jim? Yes. Um, I think we have one other. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Yeah, and we got another person coming in. Okay. Uh, well, we can see all of them and we know they're there. So do they need to announce themselves? Virginia Ferris, Cork. <laughs> Very good. Michael? Michael? Our Cork member. Michael Gelfand, Cork. Okay, Tom? Tom Berger, Cork. Okay, are they the three Cork members we have on, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. We have another Cork member. Member. member who just arrived. Okay. Announce yourself, please, there. <laughs> Project McCoy, Cork. Good morning. Mr. Sanchez has joined the meeting. They would perhaps we would like him to speak. I see that. Ah. A ghost from the past has returned. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to be back with you guys. I was so excited when I saw it. <laughs> You're not out running any marathons. How come? Uh, Wait to the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Wow, this is uh, Yogi Bear deja vu all over again. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so yeah, it's been like a homecoming. So it feels like <laughs> back with my family. So it feels good. <laughs> the sad part is most of us are still here. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't get rid of any of us. So. <laughs> out of Benny, that's a good news. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, uh, we got our attendance done. Uh, my only uh, opening remark is we found with the recorded meeting, for those of you online, that when you make any motion or say anything or tap your computer, it tends to, on the recorded meeting, make your image go full screen. So um, just be aware of that, that you, know, you might be just sitting there listening to the meeting or watching the meeting. Uh, and you might tap something on your computer screen. Well, the computer thinks that you're now the speaker and goes full screen on the recorded meeting. So we, we will see if there's something that we can do internally to adjust that in the future. I don't know if we're going to be able to adjust it now, but if not, it may be that we may need you to make settings changes. And uh, we'll find that out for next month. Okay. Um, does, that, does that mean even when I touch my mouse? I'm not sure. When you make a noise. When, when, usually when you make a noise, the computer's picking up that you okay. might be the one speaking and therefore it brings you up to full screen. It doesn't do it for us in the room. I just found with the recorded Google Meet that it does that. All of a sudden I'm watching the meet and all of a sudden my whole computer screen goes to one person's face. And it's like, ah! <laughs> so just be aware of that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chairman's report. Anyone with a conflict of interest for anything being reviewed today? Not seeing anything from anybody online or in the room. So we have no conflicts. Lou, court report. Yeah, it's submitted to Carol Bass, who's the secretary. She distributes to the board meeting. Mr. Barberi accepts and acknowledges that we received it and nobody has pulled anything. So Okay. It's automatically approved. You can do another one for this month, of course. Okay, thank you. Staff updates already here. Well, again, you um, you jumped on my two things I was going to actually bring <laughs> to the group. One is to welcome our new Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Joe Sanchez. For um, all the rest of you who don't know him, <laughs> let's face it, nobody doesn't know Joe. So, welcome, Joe. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and. Um, um, of, of the many things that, that Joe brings to the district or that he had with us before is um, his healthy lifestyle. Yeah, a little bit. And, um, and yeah, 
for those of you who've seen me now in person, I lost 50 pounds in the last three, four months. So a lot of people have been asking me, no, I'm, everything's okay. I actually did it on purpose. Um, but we are um, we are um, engaging with the uh, school districts program um, district wide, but uh, specifically with our operations division. We're going to try to focus on um, our wellness promotion. And in fact, there's a race, um, a 5K race coming up. The Ed Foundation is sponsoring um, at the end of this month. And um, uh, right now, it's uh, ECS uh, Environmental and uh, facilities construction. We're gonna try to get food service in. Joe and myself are both running it, and um, as is uh, Kesta James from ECS, and a number of other employees. So we're really trying to uh, change the culture and, and get back into that health, healthy lifestyle. Do the uh, get rid of COVID uh, sitting around. We're, we're gonna focus on, on making things better. So um, a, another great point of having Joe here. We're going to promote that uh, healthy lifestyle. A, a 5K for Joe is going to be like a little walk around the block. It truly is. <laughs> That's right. Although I, I think I'm not sure if Joe, Joseph as much a fan of the run as he is of the, like the biking or the swimming kind of thing. So that's uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll gladly uh, uh, enjoy that uh, opportunity out. It's, uh, it's actually on Halloween. <laughs> it's on Halloween at uh, John Prince Park. So um, we're excited about that. Um, and other than that, um, uh, I think that Jim, did you have? Uh, uh, yes, I if you uh, please kind of have a. Uh, public service announcement. <laughs> so, um, we always have a double time of the year. It creates a big mess. They are worse than cockroaches. So, if you would kindly uh, refrain from feeding something. <laughs> Even after you retire in February, you're going to come back with these for, for us? <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a condition of your retirement, isn't it? <laughs> That is all I have uh, for my staff comment this morning. Okay, very good. Uh, any public comments? Okay, not seeing any public comments. And do I guess we accept public comments online too or not? Uh, yeah. They cannot communicate. Okay, so it's okay. It's one way. Okay, you were pointing. Oh, do we have everybody? My mic was on here originally. Okay, I attended twice. Oh, no, uh, Mike Weed has entered the meeting, so he now is part of the uh, attendance. Um, all right, let's get down consent agenda. I still wanted that poll. FC3, FC John. FC4, I wanted that poll. FC5, FC6, FC7. Just on the catch up, do we have any online court Nobody have anything on that one? Maybe Mance. Oh, the car. All right, was FC1 pulled? Yes. yes. Thank Did you. You, want, you want that also, Michael? Yes. <laughs> Somebody mowing their lawn as they're attending the meeting. That's really uh, industrious. Multitasking. All right, PC1. FC1. Hmm? FC1? No, we're now moved on to the PCs. We just checked the FCs. You want to bring that on? PC1, back to PC1. You're okay with that, John? Yes. Okay. PC2. Four. BC five. BC six. BC seven. BC eight. BC nine. BC ten. BC eleven. Oh, please. Okay. PC 12. Okay. Need a motion for the ones that were not pulled to move forward with no objection. 
So moved. But if I can, need a second. Second. Second by Tredrick. All in favor? Aye. Anyone online opposed? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may make a note for the minutes, uh, and I'll be moving to amend them at the end of the meeting, but the motion in the minutes should read that court has no objection as opposed to recommend. Right. I think that's what I said, that we had no objection. That's not how the minutes are being prepared. Okay. What I, I guess what I'm saying is what I just said is that we didn't have an objection, so that was the motion. And we will make sure that Susan recognizes that language. Um, in the uh, uh, meeting minutes. Okay, uh, to the items here, C1. They were doing FC1. FC1, I'm sorry. <laughs> Michael, you had FC1 pulled? Um, that's the Edison Meister one. Uh, Citrus Cove. Well, FC1 is the um, is a change order report. So if there's a specific item within that report, you either either you would so Mr. I made a mistake. I meant FC two for Edison Meister. Okay, you meant FC two. Okay, so we'll change. All right, we'll change Michael's to FC two. I had still pulled the uh, FC one um, comments. I had worked on the contingency items and then the responses. Um, Jim, if you could, I don't know if you can share that page. Which is the responses to Cork? I'm uh, down to the bottom of the first page. Uh, I think this was the one about the bottle filling. Everyone see that? Yeah, the bottle filling stations. Yes. Um, now, are you sharing it with Yeah, um, yeah go back to the meet up on the top. <coughs> and now share, pick that guy. Not available. It, it is. You just got to share and then do your screen. No. That work? No. no. You got it. Go back to it right now. And I'll hit there. Pick the pick. Pick the window. There. Click on it. And hit there. Okay. Now, Jim, what you're going to do is go click on that. Okay. Um, do you remember there's, uh, I don't remember the technology, but there's a way that, that you could, you could have it only be on that side. Okay. Um, if, if you keep, carry your cursor over to the left screen, keep going, it will, will it jump? The duplicate screen. Okay. Uh, we, Jim, we got to get back to having it as the split screens because. Uh, suggestion. <laughs> well, right now it's okay because everybody on, at home is seeing that. Okay. Um, well, to move this forward, Jim, you can work on trying to get uh, so we can see the people at the same time, and we'll do a discussion. The discussion point I had was on the, uh, the the first item on there about the bottle filling stations, and that my comment was that we were getting this every month, and that was there actually some type of you know official memo out to all the architects and, and engineers that you know we've made this change so don't show us any more specs that have regular drinking fountains. Correct. Um, if I may, um, uh, Mr. Porter and, and uh, to all the court members, um, our bottle filling stations are not something that was uh, standard as part of our facility renewals. When we were uh, put, putting, when we put the scopes together for the last three plus years, we were part of the scope was replacement of water fountains. If water fountains weren't working, we were going to upgrade them and replace them with standard drinking fountains. Um, since COVID, we've had um, uh, obvious, an, an, uh, a much higher propensity for people wanting to use their own water bottles, filling them up instead of having to put your face over and potentially sharing the, the germs. Um, so bottle filling stations became a big question. And over the last uh, couple of months, and I say last couple, literally within the last two or three months, we've now made it a part of our district standard. We have a standard bottle filling station. And what we're doing is on the facility renewal projects, instead of replacing all of them with standard, we're, we're doing a handful of bottle fillers in high traffic areas, whether it's uh, by the gymnasium, 
by the media center, out by the main office, high traffic areas so that the students and the, uh, the guests have an opportunity to use those. Um, so that's where we're going to see change orders for the next several months as the, uh, the projects that were in construction now, when they were designed, they didn't have the bottle fillers as part of their program. We're now asking them to, to replace them after five or six uh, to improve the, that environment. Uh, if we're giving a school tomorrow to a new architect engineering team, does the master spec now tell them to do bottle filling stations? It does. Okay. It does. All right. And we've even come up with a standard for high schools get somewhere in the range of 11 to 13, middle schools get somewhere between six and eight, and elementary okay. get between three and five as a standard. Mm -hmm. Some schools may say, you know, we want to have more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in fact, some schools are funding them themselves. So the schools will say, oh, well, we got a donation from a parent and they want to replace with X number more. Um, we're trying not to have it so that every water fountain in the district is a bottle filling station because they're quite a bit more expensive and take a little bit more infrastructure. The bottle fillers, for example, require two electrical outlets. There's one for the pump and uh, one for the sensor for the electronics in it. Oh, that's silly. Yeah. How much more expensive are they? Probably double. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to say between a regular water fountain was eight, 800 to 1,000. Um, these are 2,500, Jim, is that right? I'm sorry. Uh, the water, I know you were doing the bottle fill. I'm only pointing to Jim because Jim is actually working on a specific project for bottle filling stations at a couple of our, um, uh, at our shelters to make sure that, that those high traffic areas have them right away. But, uh, 25 for 25,000, just about. 5,000. But that's, that's uh, purchase only. That's not installed. So we're working on install right now. So it's probably going to be 50%, 75% more than that. You get it around two grand each. Okay. Yeah. I said 25,000. Yeah. And that's 25,000 for 25. Just oh. <laughs> so it's probably going to be 50,000 for 25. And so it's about 2,000. Uh, that's all I had on uh, FC1. I was the only one that pulled it. So I need a motion to allow FC1 to go forward. So moved. John, need a second by Ken. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, uh, Michael, you wanted FC2. Michael Gelfand. There you are. You're muted, Michael. There you go. Avoid having feedback here. All righty. So um, this is on the Edison Meister wall issue, I believe. Yeah. Um, what is the justification other than community desires? Yeah. Uh, safety, increased safety and security measures. Where's the report from public safety that says that it's necessary there and it isn't necessary in the other schools? It, it was, it was in fact a request because of the, um, uh, the uh, close proximity. To, to, to what? To the neighbor, neighboring houses. It's, it's one of those schools that the houses are relatively close to the back line. Um, and while so this is a request from the police department not from community because the um, now this was this was a community primary this was stemming from a community request yep so was it community or security or, or uh, police department which one generated it uh, it was it was initiated by the community requesting it and i i would imagine that theirs was for sound and annoyance or I, I, whatever you want to, however you want to say it. But uh, the question of whether it was a safety and security measure that's, uh, would it cause further problems? No, in fact, walls are a, viewed by school police as a, a, a better enhancement. Um, a fence has a, uh, you can see through a fence, you can, uh, Make you know, uh, you can climb a fence a lot easier. That uh, that wall is a, is a bit harder to get over. Who are we protecting? The community or the school? Sorry. Well, we're we're partners on a, on a when we build a school like this, we are partners with the community. 
Yes, we are building the school primarily for our kids, but in, in, the, in that respect, we do everything we can to work with the community to make sure that it doesn't become an eyesore. Do we build a, a three-story um, school in a community right next, you know, houses right. or things? We, we try not to do that. We try to work within the, the expectations and the, uh, needs of the community. So we do make efforts like this. We, we, um, I, no, I'm just curious who thought they were getting extra protection. Was it the community felt they needed it from the school or did school feel the community was? It really, it was school police felt it was a worthy security measure in, in, in addition to the chain link fence. Mr. Chair, I move that we table this until we get a report from school police on this. I mean, I got to tell you something. Um, this is a, a huge expense, and I thought we were not allowing these types of add-ons at the last minute. Um, I do appreciate, you know, community members and you know the next door neighbors may want something like this, but this isn't something that we should be paying taxpayer dollars for. At least those that are dedicated to schools and not part of our uh, specifications at all. And for this to pop up, and especially, I mean, the justification that we have is that it's a community demand, not that it's for public security purposes. Unless the district wants to, uh, at this point, remove this from the agenda entirely. Well, I suppose that's your motion to table it. So do we have a second on that motion? Second. John seconded it. Any other comments on that motion? All right. All in favor of tabling that, say aye. 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 That's one, two, three, four. And Frank. Okay. Is that? Let's do it again. I was going to say, yeah, if you could take a roll. Let's do a roll. Mike Weta. Aye. Frederick. Aye. I'm a no. Frank. No. No. Aye. 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 I think the ayes have it. Do we have yeah. Yeah. Virginia? Virginia? No. And Tom Berger? Aye. Okay. The ayes have it. Then this motion is tabled for um, a report. A report. <laughs> let, let me be okay. <laughs> Understand? I want to hear from the court what it is you're looking for because this is a change order that's already been implemented it's it's the school is open are you suggesting that um uh you just want um some report from school police that says it's an acceptable security measure is that the the, the extent of it or is there more because when next month when i come in with a uh, a statement from school police are we then going to have the same issue continuing on of now it's not about the security measure it's about why are we adding the service because i hear i hear the question is it's about security but i also heard the comment about the specifics of why are we doing what neighbors asked for is that the concern is that a, a secondary concern i think it was very clear in my statements and that is that this isn't part of the specifications yeah, there's plenty of things we do that aren't part of the specifications that get added, but is that $150,000 and not generated from the community. It's one thing when the principal comes up with an education reason. Yeah. All right. I mean, and by the way, I'm, I've always felt myself very tight to Edison Meisner. My daughter went through it. I was an officer of the SAC. I've donated uh, a lot of money, at least relative. For it, I've been a supporter of the school in many ways, but this is not about Addison Meister or the community. I mean, it's my community, in essence. But there is the way that this is presented to us. We are here to stop something like this, and if if we are in a position where it's been done and that's it, then we shouldn't even be seeing it. And it should just be pulled because we're not here as a rubber stamp first. Second, security is a brand new reason for this, all right? It is called a security wall, but this is 
generated because of the neighborhood, supposedly, and I don't see anything in the backup from anyone that, that has asked for it before it went up. And, you know, we've talked about Addison Weisner many times, and this has never arisen. Now, when school police come up with their report, I do not expect, and I think it would be an insult to our members to say, just because school police comes up before us and says, we want it, that we're going to rubber stamp it also. I would expect that they are going to have a really good justification for coming in well after the school was designed, planned, constructed, all the other discussions we've had about it as to why now we're getting $150,000. So it's not about security. It's not strictly about security is what I'm hearing. I, th I think what I'm hearing is that we're looking for a validation for why the wall exists here at this school versus why don't we put walls that have houses within close proximity. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a very valid question. I know we've question. done so. I know Palm Beach Central is a perfect example of a school we did uh, build, build a wall during construction and after, after market change to build a wall. I know there are other schools that we've done that as well. Um, if we're going to do it, then we should have some kind of criteria that says this is when we will consider a wall and this is not. And there are certain circumstances where if we had volunteered to build a wall, and let's say the principal said, why are you doing that? I don't think I want a wall there. I don't want it to feel like, well, let's say, I don't want it to feel like a prison type of environment. Let's not build a wall. And, I, I, we will work with the principal to make sure we don't build that wall. I think what this committee does is that we try to have standardization right. and not kind of selective yeah. school by school, neighborhood by neighborhood um, projects. And I think that's what we're looking for is if it's been done at a dozen other schools with very similar conditions, and that's a validation for why it got at this school. Okay. But then, then the question is going to become, okay, why wasn't it planned? at the beginning instead of at the end I, you know we don't have those answers um and that's that's a simple enough there are plenty of things we do that that aren't planned quite as well or thought through or even you know i'm sure we had community meetings before um they weren't brought up by the community when we were doing the design process it was when we got into construction when something like that happened well i understand that so yes. i i I'd yes. love to say no, no, you know no. shame on them they should have told us earlier but we're going to do what we need to do no, I understand that because once I see the three D going up, then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, it's right there in our face, and we didn't realize that. So I get that this wall is not built yet, is it? Oh, of course, it's built. The school's open. Built, yeah. Okay. Mr. Gelfand's bringing the point up of one meter. Um, Mr. Gelfand brought the point up of well, this isn't a rubber stamp, right? But it's a change order uh, that occurred during construction that was it was built at the very end it was the last thing we ended up doing um, well, we're, well we're not going to remove the wall so i think what we need to do from all of this is come up with something that we can use and the district can use and your department can use going forward for when okay. when requests like this will be considered and when they will be outrightly dismissed right. because they don't meet a certain criteria understood are we allowed to project why the wall goes out? I don't understand. Project my thoughts on why the wall is up? Because there was a site plan that was included in the uh, right. PCO. And I think the wall is where the backyards of the houses, I can't really tell from the site plan, but I'm projecting that maybe that's the backyards of some houses and they didn't want to see basketball and soccer going on and baseball going on. Yeah. If there was some major activity right at that location, it would create noise and yeah. confusion. Maybe that's a good criteria. I think it's not just if it's very, very passive and it's. I, and I, I, I agree because I think I, I see Mr. Galpan's point to the uh, I see it to the fact that it just says you know it was requested by the community. Right. That's all we had. Why? What was the justification? What was their complaint? That would warrant the wall, and that if, to that end, I, I see that I will come back with a better explanation. Thank you. And, and this whole committee too is about equity between schools, and it's like why does one school get something and another school wow. doesn't? Uh, and, and, and again, that's that's the other thing that we're kind of questioning is okay, what what was unique about this situation and this school that it warranted a wall versus a fence? 
that's that's it. And to develop criteria going forward so that when another community says, I want a wall, give me a wall. We can say, no, I'm sorry, your request doesn't meet our criteria. Mr. Chair. Yes. So what is the price or dollar value threshold before it has to come back to, I guess, I mean, because this is a change order. I, I guess I'm just understanding. What if it was three hundred and fifty thousand? You know, so what is the dollar value threshold before they that they would not even attempt to commence the change order until it comes back to us? Isn't that a isn't there a dollar value threshold on that? Is that three hundred? Well, there is none. There's nothing that would qualify it, whether it, it's something we don't bring forward or, or anything like that. No, no, no. no. Oh, before they start the work. In other words, if it was a half a million dollars. Are they going to go ahead and start the work and then bring it to us for? Approval after the fact. When is it required to go to the board before the work is done? Well, change orders. In, in this particular case, um, the change order. If it, yeah, I was going to say there's 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 approval levels, right. uh, delegated authority approval yes. levels, where you won't see it. Right. Um, and in this in this particular case, it was under it. it's it, it's a, over it, and that's why it didn't show up on SC one. It's it's okay. We've exceeded it. You, generally, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Staff gets up to up to a hundred thousand um, dollars threshold, cumulative. Twenty five for the SPA, from twenty five to seventy five me, seventy five to one hundred uh, Mr. Sanchez, and then from that point, it has to go to the board. So that's generally our, our rule of thumb. That's that's part of the policy. Um, so it can start the work, but they go ahead and do the change order. Well, in, in this particular case, the, this happened at the very end of the project. It was an add-on at the end of the project, and yes, in order to open the school, it was yeah. Do we do we do we, first of all? Do we have the money? Do we have the money? Um, you guys you guys got us uh, years ago on painting a wall, repainting a wall in uh, the principal's office, and that was a five thousand dollar change. But it's the same question of why are we wait, making a principles taking a principal's request and doing it without getting your approval or the board's approval. And, and, and Mr. Dolan, where does the money come from? Contingency? Uh, project contingency, yes. Yes. So and, I'm still confused as to what triggers needing approval before doing this. Is there a dollar amount? If something were to cost a yeah. million dollars more that you wanted to do, it had to be done, whatever, and there was enough contingency. What triggers that needing approval prior to engaging the contractor to do the work? Generally, the rule of thumb is we are are expected to take it to the board. Yeah. If, it, if we need board sig signature, right. we take it to the board before it actually gets executed. What, what, at what amount? What that dollar amount? That's what we're trying to get at. Well, and anything. Or or that didn't happen in this case. Our own approval. What's that? But that didn't happen in this case because the work was done. The work was done because it was happening at the last last month of the construction project. So going forward, what is that stop dead point on? Is it two hundred and fifty thousand? It's not a dollar value. I mean, I, 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 maybe I'm missing. I think we have a policy for when contingency use can be done by the SBA, right. by the deputy director, the director. Same thing for change orders. And the superintendent. Isn't it up to two fifty for the superintendent to approve? Cumulative. Something? Yeah. All right. Prior to going to the board. So if you had but over over except that any individual item over one hundred thousand has to go to the board. But before the work is done, the intent is always to do a change order before the work is done. However, you know it's a different circumstance here. Well, We're trying to open the school. Was this presented to the board? I'm sorry. Was this presented to the board? No. no, this, no, 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 no. I'm no. saying first. This is it? First. I'm saying first. We look at it goes to the board. But but what's the purpose at this point then? I mean, because I, I guess that really makes a good point in, in Michael's statement. I mean, what are we doing? I mean, are we just rubber stamping it? I mean, just for to be a rebel rouser, I don't want to support it. What happens? The contractor, the work is already done. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a process issue that I think we probably need to fine tune. Well, it's again, it's not a process issue because if a change order happens in the in the last month of the project and it needs to get executed. We do take that um, chance that you might reject it, but we have to get the work done. So we will proceed with a change order in the in advance of the board signing off. If this had, had happened in the first or second month, we wouldn't have had the work done. It, we would have waited for 
but but but, but but it you know I, I respectfully disagree it is a process issue because who makes that determination on when we decide to actually put the wall up because if you can defer it to you know the you know, the there last nothing nefarious it's not like we went no, no, but no no i'm just speaking of the process and i'm not suggesting that but you have to have a process that's going to be defensible and it doesn't sound like this is one of them because obviously if i'm the project manager or even the GC or, you know, I don't know, I, I may choose to defer something that I know I can get in on a change order at the last moment and it won't go through scrutiny just to um, get it done. Uh, again, that's that's questioning our, we won't let that happen. Uh, that's our job is to make sure. But that, that begs the question of what is the, what is the trigger? Is there a trigger that it has to be 250,000 or is it just based on every situation? It's not a money issue. It's a timing. It, every change order we do every everything we can to make sure that every change order goes to the board before it gets executed. Did, did we have before to? Have it's to... actually implemented. Sorry, not executed. Before it gets implemented. But this is already implemented. This was a this was a challenge that happened in the last month of the project where we had to hurry up and get a wall built, open the school. But back to Michael's point, if there's no justification, if public safety says, you know, I think a chain link fence would have worked. Now we've spent 148 thousand and i mean we could have probably gotten it done for 20 or less but i, I mean i don't, I don't want to challenge actually, or this is actually supplement to a chain link fence so the chain link fence exists this right. is an, a supplement to it so we would have spent the, the fence anyway this is um an add-on and again I'll, I'll get back to uh mr gelfand's request uh to try to explain the justification um but well, well between security and um well, community need and, and and i don't believe at this point there's going to be any problem from public safety given a justification after it's already done i'm sure somebody can say that but even still again it's i believe it's a process issue that just kind of seems like after the fact yeah. yes um so the process is um you would take a, a, an opinion to the board as to whether or not you want them to look at this, you can uh, have offered no objection to FC1 and other ones. You know, we can offer an objection. You can say, Cork does not think this was a good idea, and this is the reasons why, and we'll take that to the table. But we already took our position, we tabled it. Well, okay. well tabling it doesn't solve the problem of you pulled it off the agenda. It, you have to do something with it, put it back on, or. Or next it. month, we bring it back and explain to them, and then. They um, uh, that they they acknowledge or accept that the reasoning, the rationale is justified, and they approve it. Yeah, I think oh, they rec sorry, not approve. It. They they recommend moving it forward. I think the rationale you need to come back with also is validating why this couldn't have gotten pre-approval instead of asking for permission. As it Tom Burgery, had your hand raised. Yeah, I'm back in school. Um, this is an issue that's arisen in the past regarding late changes. And it is a frustration for for me and I, I know for Michael and, and probably others that have seen this occur in the past. I think it goes back to the last time I saw Mr. Sanchez, in fact. Um, <laughs> the, sorry, Joe. The... Um, <laughs> The, the issue is always right. we are getting it after the fact. There obviously is always good reasons, but it is a concern. Um, and, and I think that's the process discussion is there, there, there has to be some limit, I think, on what can be approved late in the game without board or our review and i and i think we're not doing our job as the court if we don't raise this issue and i'd like i'd like to also mention it uh please note that it didn't stop with me this all this went all the way up through the in the the process the the recommendation to include this wall did happen all the way through the chief operating officer and to the superintendent it, they were aware uh when this issue was brought forward so it's not like it stopped with me and I said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. It, it was um, made aware uh, the chief operating officer, superintendent. Right. Uh, I'm going to let Joe go and then Michael, you'll be up next. 
Go ahead, Joe. All right. Um, I, I'm purposely trying to stay quiet in these videos because you know there's other people who are, who are in position who know more about this than I do because I've been away for eight and a half years, right? So, um, but I will say this: that uh, you know, this is this is obviously this is not the first time we put a wall up, and you know, uh, we did put a wall up similar to this at at Palm Beach Central, and that was part of negotiations with um, that community back then um, to to allow the school to go there without their their strong objection. But I, I, will, I will say this because I, I don't know all the facts and all the history, but I do know um, that there are there are there's a policy in place already that prevents us to from um, getting too far ahead of um, you know your approvals and the board approvals. And I just need to educate myself on that a little bit further. Uh, I, I think the process piece has already been addressed. I know we went through an audit when I was here um, many years ago that kind of addressed these issues. So um, I think they've been properly addressed. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna defend the decision because I don't know like said all the history. Um, I, of course, I'm always gonna stand up for my people whenever possible, and, and you know, as long as they don't do anything crazy. Right. So I, I'm gonna stand behind um, Dave and 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 Jim and the rest of the team. But um, it, you know, obviously the, the contractor completed the work, uh, the district owes them payment for the work. And, um, and you know, if we approve it, if it was approved today, we can pay them quicker than we can pay them a month from now, hopefully when it, it does get approved and, and processed. But I will say that uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to listen to um, the, the concerns of the court members I've always have been. I think I, I've had a reputation of, of being responsive to to concerns. And if you want us to bring back something next month to better explain our position, our backing of this issue, we're more than happy to do that for you. <clears throat> Michael, just a just a question since as Joe mentioned, um, work's already been done, contractor needs to get paid whatever we decide isn't going to change the fact that the wall's there. I think what you have brought up is valid in terms of a process. And I, what I'd like to suggest, and I don't know if you're willing to revise your motion and we do a new vote, is that we allow this to go forward with the caveat that staff come back to us next month with a very decent discussion about process so that we don't end up with one of these again uh, without it having being vetted um regardless of what stage in the process it is and, and that there's a procedure for a community to request something that has to go through you know more of a review process than just at the staff level because it also helps protect staff i mean now they're getting thrown under the bus because of what they thought were good decisions what about a good decision? So, all right michael you had your hand up um first welcome back mr sanchez <laughs> Uh, and I've always appreciated your forthrightness uh, to the committee, and that's why you're held in such high regard. And I think that you've, you know, set a standard that staff continues uh, to, 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 to meet. Um, everyone involved in the process knows about Cork and what we're supposed to be here for. So I certainly appreciate the desire of everyone to get paid but they knew that we're a bottleneck at this point. And this is something that came through. It's a substantial amount at the very last minute. Um, they're gonna have to wait or alternatively staff and the board figures out some other way to pay for it. Or they, you know, they just pull it and go directly to the board. Um, I would request, and this way I don't have to, you know, you, if you wanna force me, I'll make a public records request. But I'd like to see the community requests for the wall so that I can evaluate exactly what they've asked for. Second, I'd like to see the referral to the police department for them to evaluate it. And third, I'd like to see the police department's responses to that request. And all of those presumably are dated before the change order was approved. So those are three items I'd like to see uh, Mr. Dolan, will those, will those be forthcoming? Uh, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work on all of them. Yeah. 
party. I, I will say also at this, um, and I may be the one guy beating this drum, um, part of this is I'm, I'm looking at the general process dynamics, um, but I have been concerned over security excuses coming up well after uh, they should have. And there appears to be no restraints on that. And the magical word security supposedly trumps all of our discussions. And there's something wrong in the process separately as to why aren't security concerns addressed up front in the design stage, which is an, another issue that we can discuss on this. Uh, so I would say that from a procedural perspective, um, a motion to table normally is not debatable. It's been approved. Um, you know, it's, we, we, we move on at this point. Thank you. All right, we have a uh, motion and I just have so a Virginia has a pin up as well. Virginia, yes, go ahead, Virginia. Sorry. Sorry. Just a parliamentary uh, note here. When something is tabled, if it isn't taken off the table by the end of the meeting, it dies. All right, All right. Next, yeah, next month we'll come back with um, right. the same agenda item. The, the table is going to be tabled for the next meeting. That's a different motion. Yeah. So, Virginia, you're saying that because we voted to table it, it dies completely and forever? No. It died, right. It just it just disappears because you didn't um, move to move it to the next meeting agenda. But they can each oh, meeting. Yeah, just, but this can still go forward to the board. It's just our motion to table dies. It right. doesn't prevent it from going to the board. It won't go to the board. Yeah. Right, it's not going to the board and staff has agreed that they will bring it back with explanations at the next meeting. This is. I'm just giving you a parliamentary take on what tabling means. Maybe you could move to amend it so that you would come back next month. But it can come back next month. What you need to do is a motion to remove it from the table and then deal with it in a different way. But this is, again, process. And how long are we going to hold out this contractor to getting paid? You know, and I don't know that it's their fault. And I certainly am not suggesting anything as far as, but, you know, I think we need to work on the process and move the item forward. That's that's just my opinion. Yeah, if, if not getting it approved means the contractor is waiting at least another month to get paid. I mean, the contractor went on good uh, a, a good process that, hey, I, I got approved, staff approved it. That's the only level I need to approve it. I'm going to do the work and I'm going to get it done. Right. John. David, the uh, contractor realized he didn't have a signed change order. Yes. He did the work at his own risk. Okay. The delay of a month in his payment is not our problem with that, it. Correct. Okay. Jim. I agree. I think you need to, to take a motion to untable it and just decide what to do. I think Mr. Dolan has agreed to uh, pull it from the agenda. Is that correct? I have. It will not be on the board agenda um, in October. Yeah, and I think we're talking about this agenda for right now. We right. want to change a word. It's a different item. I just had one question. It was uh, was a wall required to get a CO? No, the fence no. was already up and the okay. fence is still up. Okay. Well, I'm just wondering at the end of the process and everything, I'm wondering if it got rushed because we had to have the CO, but if it no. okay. It was, it was it was more um building a no, wall. I just a wall while occupied by kids. So we wanted to we wanted to be done with the construction. Um, I don't blame you. Let's move on. Yes. Can you clarify if the fence uh, the existing fence is on the outside or inside of the wall? On the neighbor neighbor side, right, the wall. So you got fence and then wall heading from neighbors to school. Yeah. And we bring that up as a security concern. You climb the fence, the fence. from the wall. You're in the you're in the yard. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we're going to move forward. Uh, next one pulled was FC three. John. Yeah, FC three is close out of the Egret Lake, and. I don't know, maybe it looks a little odd. Somebody asked a question about this one. It wasn't me, but there's a CCD number one included in this closeout, and it's for ratification only. 
And I think the answer on that was because uh, there's a board policy that it needs 7.22 that it needs to be included in this change order. Can you explain that? The bar board policy allows us to issue directives if it would hurt the district not to proceed in any way. So we did. We got the, um, the CCB approved last Christmas so we could paint over the holiday and not impact operations. Um, the policy then says that every CCB has to be incorporated into a change order and they left it to the last change order. So here it is. But it's not in the change order, is it? It's included in the backup of the change order. I'm sorry? It is included in the backup of the change order. You can see it if you want to pull up the uh, detail. Oh, it's our <coughs> change order number on your plan? Okay, go ahead. You're okay with that? Yeah. Motion? Yeah, I move we uh, move this to the board without objection. Okay. You second? Second. Second by Ken. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed online? Seeing none. Okay. I had pulled FC4. Um, I guess I wasn't completely satisfied with the response we got back. Uh, I think for historical purposes, anytime we have quite large credits coming back with the GMP, that we needed it further explained like it was in the response we got when it was questioned, you know, that it was our LED lighting and concrete paving and signage and this didn't get done and that could, I mean, that answer would have maybe not even pull it. Right, but remember from, from a perspective of board, I, I agree. And, and um, it, it's my nature, John knows from my past time, I write too much, I say too much. Right. But the reality is on board items, they're generally follow a certain, um, uh, cadence and they're minimized in detail. We try to be condensed and whatnot. Yes, I agree. If I had had my druthers, I'd have written up all that detail so that if anybody wanted to, most times our board uh, items are more condensed and don't get into great deal detail. Because if I do that on this one, then I'm doing it on every one and every board item ends up being uh, dramatically bigger, more cumbersome and whatnot. Um, All I'm asking for is this paragraph appears somewhere in our backup, you know, 10 lines, eight lines. Okay. I'm just looking for more detail that historically, whether you're part of this committee, the school district or whatever, five years from now, somebody can look back on how in the world did they get a half million dollars back on a $3 million contract? I don't understand that. Jim, is it something, uh, it, it, Jim and I put a, on the last page of the change order, we always put our little, um, Break down to make sure we've followed the delegated authority. Uh, we might we might be able to modify that and just throw in more detail in that page so that there's something that's thrown in by staff after the fact. It's not part of the change order. Yeah, it's not part of the agenda item, but it'll be in the change order. It could even we be part that. of the the cover page or something okay. that's not part of yeah, the change order. And we can do yes. Yeah. And I'm not looking for cost of each line item. I'm just looking yeah. for kind of an overall scope because. What you told me here made sense of why there was a half million bucks being given back. Other than that, I'm questioning, okay, wait a minute, did the, guy, did the GC overbid the job so much that we're getting a half million back on what he overpriced? It eliminates questions. Absolutely, understood. All right, uh, I was wanna pull FC4, I have nothing else. Need a motion to move forward with FC4. I move we move forward. All right. None, and then Ken seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. Mr. Porter, can you just ask if anybody online is? Yes, I'm sorry. Anybody online opposed? Okay. Uh, we're down to PC 11. Michael, you pulled that. My question on that was just didn't we recently approve a new roof for that? I remember we had some discussions concerning the school. Um, it may be a long longer than my recollection. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't PC know. 11. I, I don't recall us having a discussion on that. No, already then I'll, that we have no objection to the board considering it. Need a second on PC 11? Second. Second by Virginia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone online opposed? Okay. We're done with that.
In progress work. Okay. All right, Jim, I think you're gonna post for us. Yeah, wish me luck here. <laughs> okay. Diving into the deep end. Where am I going? I'm going to Yeah, that one right there. Back to here. Back to there and share that. On the screen. Oh, you got to click on the screen first. Got to go back there. Click on yeah, the screen. Share. Yeah. And then so hit share. share. All right. Yeah, do that. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, again, uh, very similar to what we've done in uh, past months. Jim, if you want to drop down, next one. Um, we can see we're, we're, we're making some pretty good progress. Uh, the revenue is generated. And um, We've expended 444 million so far. Um, we've got a pretty strong uh, diversity participation, both in the designers and even in the contractors. We're hovering around 30%. Next one. Okay, this is our standard monthly um, solicitations. You'll notice that in comparison to past months, it is um, we've got fewer items on, and the reason being is we've gotten through a lot. We've <laughs> I, there are a number of you in the room that have sat on selection committees, and we thank you very much. Um, we've gotten through most of the, this round of facility renewals and some of our new construction. You can see we've got a, a few modernizations coming up that are in process right now. Pine Grove and West Riv are, uh, are out on the street and coming uh, for selection soon. Um, Roseville Full Service, um, we'll get into a little bit more, but Roseville Full Service, we're working on. Uh, we're doing a due diligence with our architect to uh, see about master planning it before we put it out on the street, because what I don't want to do is put an RFP on the street for a scope. I think it's this. And then once we get into it, we realize, oh, it's not that at all. It's something totally over here. So we want to make sure we have a, done a thorough vetting with an outside consultant uh, on that. Same thing is with our transportation facilities. We're in the middle of a uh, due diligence uh, with column A on our Belvedere and our South transportation projects. And we would anticipate that in coming months, uh, the RFPs will go out on the street. Next uh, slide. Okay, so from a GMP perspective, um, these are the three that are coming up. Um, in November, we've got uh, Eagles Landing, Marcami, and we're, we're about two weeks out outside of phase. So that's why Orchard View will end up in December. Maybe if we get lucky, we'll have everything for uh, Orchard View in November, but I'm, we're, we're playing it conservative. We think we'll be there in December. Next one. These are our development activities. Okay, so um, as you'll see there, we are uh, going through the procurement process for Coral Sunset, Loggers, Golden Grove, HL Johnson. Um, that's, um, that was done last month. The uh, Timber Trace core, as well as these other facility renewals, um, we are doing those now. Those are this month. You just approved, uh, recommended approval on those. The next ones, Windbrook and Pine Grove. Those modernizations, we're advertising, we've advertised them already. Um, we're gonna be picking those and bringing them to the board in November. West Rib is a, a new one added on the capital plan this year. Um, that modernization. That one is advertised in September, and we're going to have that um, after the turn of the new year. Um, all right. As I mentioned, feasibility study for Roosevelt. Um, so we'll be kicking that off. And then we're doing uh, master planning with column A for the two transportation facilities, as I mentioned. Next slide. All right, design activities. Boy, we got a lot of work going on. Um, so that's why you guys all went through the selection committees and, and um, contracts for design and pre-con. And here we are. We've got um, designs finalizing for those three schools. The GMPs are coming. Um, uh, our middle school 17 PP, which I'll talk about a little bit um, in, a, in, a, in a second. Um, Highland Liberty 
uh, Santa Lucia and Dwyer, they're all coming up next. They're they're on the verge. We, they'd be in December. We'll probably more likely get them in January, February. Um, designs ongoing on those, what is it, 11 sites? And um, uh, those couple of modernizations, Grove Park and Malaluca, we're about to start the holding campuses, start construction on the holding campuses for Grove Park and Malaluca. Um, we're um, in design on the core expansions for both Seminole and Del Prado. So, so before you go on, um, go ahead back to go back, back one. Thank you. Um, lost my train of uh, Grove Park and Malaluca. Yeah, yeah, no. Most of our construction when we started off the uh, FCA work was uh, summers and winter breaks. Yeah. Is this work the same process or are we able to get in during the school year to do a lot or most of these? Depend it depends on the school. Okay. Um, but yes, we are in a lot of the schools. We are in fact working all year long. Um, some, some schools are um, have a little bit of vacancy and so the principal will work with our team and give us four classrooms at the end of this hallway where we can box it off and do the improvements there, uh, that kind of thing. So we are getting work done during the school year um, as for, and, and breaks and whatnot as well. I would guess the AC change out, you can't do that because the AC goes into more than just those four classrooms. It depends, it depends. You're, you're right, but um, uh, at Royal Palm Beach High School, um, uh, Gilbane was able to actually work during the school year. They would bring in temporary cooling as part of their project to cool that segment that they were working on and then do a switch over like at night or a weekend or something like that. So they were able to, in fact, do that. Not everybody's going to do that. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, Royal Palm Beach High School was a challenge, and um, but knock on wood, Royal Palm, Gilbane did a great job. They're, they're just about done with that project um, where they – they came up with innovative ways to implement the work uh, without affecting the operations. When we put it out to an R or to a GMP or to the contractor, do we dictate, okay, you're going to have to do nights and weekends with this? No. Okay. We do on certain scopes. We'll say, for example, if you're tarring a roof, it's not happening during the school, right. school day, school year. Um, that, that's disruptive. But we'll, we'll give them that feedback early on that these are the things that we'll have our experiences have suggested it's going to be detrimental. But by and large, the contractors are the ones who dictate their schedule. As a matter of fact, we have a contractor, I want to say maybe it's CAST, that is actually doing work only in summers, summers and breaks. But they work three shifts in the summers. Okay. They're working 24-7 on their school in the summer and over breaks. So are we giving them kind of deadlines like you have two years and you have to be out of here so figure out how to get there uh we're, we are we are driving them towards that yes okay. because we know that uh every day they're out there longer costs us general conditions and staff costs and all that other stuff so we're we're trying to limit it so that um we minimize our costs right so you're not going to the contractor going again yeah, tell us when you'll have it done you can back and say get it done in four years with my schedule yeah. now and, and it really depends as you said earlier it depends on when we're starting because if we're going, because we don't do this to you anymore. Remember how we used to take uh, the May meeting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be 24 items. Yeah. And, and uh, they're all trying to get them all done, uh, approved, so that we can start construction on June 1st. Well, we're not doing that anymore. You can see we're going to have GMPs in December and January and February. We'll have, we'll have some of our GMPs on the next round of schools that we won't get them until August, which means they literally just missed the summer completely. But that's part of their schedule. They're going to work their schedule so that they've got breaks coming up and they'll know which pieces they can do it in that timeline. Okay. And I, when you said, uh, I think it was Gil Bain did the extra mile to accomplish things. How do we know about that other than hearing it here? I mean, is it reflected someplace else? Like, like we're on a selection committee and we know, wow, I, you know what they've done for us is you'll hear about it in the PPEs. Well, that's what I was wondering. Other than PPEs, I well, just a, and I think I've told you guys in the past what I'm what I'm instructing all of my staff to do um, is communicate with each other. So, for example, Aaron Howard is our SPA on that Royal Palm Beach High School. Worked with Gilbane has has a lot of great things to say about Gilbane. 
But other than me telling you here now, That's right, how does he know? Well, the selection committee I members, know. my two SPAs that are on the selection committee, better speak up. They're, re they're required to go talk to Aaron because if, if Gilbane yeah. happens to be on a, on a project, they're expected to go to Aaron and say, what do you know about Gilbane? I see that he's worked on Royal Palm Beach. I have a master list that everybody goes to. And Aaron will give them his feedback. Not only do you get the PPE, but you actually get the, from the horse's mouth, the experience. Well, that's what I want is when I'm in the selection committee, I want, who do I listen to? Or yeah, my SBA is the ones that are really supposed to be okay. giving that feedback. I usually listen to them greatly. <laughs> that's, I'm trying to make sure that everybody's getting the same information. Thank you. Thank you, staff. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, next, next slide then. Um, again, I'm not going to go through these. Um, you can kind of scroll through them. You can see there's uh, these are all the ongoing facility renewal work that's on a monthly basis. Jupiter L, uh, Lake Worth Middles, um, pretty com pretty much complete. Um, Hokey. Um, there you go. Royal Palm Beach coming to a close. Close out, starting the close out process right now. Spanish River um, and Wellington High School. You'll see on the next slide. Those are uh, those are one okay. last minute. How are you doing? Because we just need to get that ACP way. Uh, you want to pop over? Yeah. Where's the other part? The hundred and something thousand one. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> Thank you. Head on back to head on back to that. There you go. Okay. So and we have Wellington High School. Um, some of the some of the things that you'll see here. Uh, delivery doors and windows were delayed. We're, we are, I mean, uh, no what surprise to anybody else, what a uh, we're, we're having uh, delivery um, delays, on, and you'll see it on some of the other things coming up, too. Um, these are just the things we, we're dealing with. It is becoming a major problem. I, and, and it's not just one thing. It's not yeah. like I could say steel is the yeah. thing and everything else is for it's every electronics piece. It's concrete. I had my yeah. contractor wait three weeks to get on a list to have concrete. Or concrete pour. Yeah. Wow. There's no, no truck drivers. Right. Jim, you can scroll through the pictures. Everybody get a chance to see. And re remember, I always say this PDF is on our cork thing, so anybody can uh, uh, take a look at it on their own, on their at their leisure. Next, keep going. No problem with that. Put through these pictures and act like it's a punch list time. Go, oh, you missed that. You missed that. You missed that. And, I send you back a bunch of marked up pictures with circles. And that would that wouldn't be good. <laughs> and in fact, those are actually just our progress photos because yeah. it's kind of like we wanted you to see that. Yeah. Sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's it's not the prettiest of pictures because we're in the middle of construction. So, um, what you'll see here. All right, now we're into our our new schools and and our other projects. Triple O High School, that's our, our large new high school um, out by Woodlands. Um, um, Angel is working both on this and O5C. This is a two-year project, so this got started a few months back, um, right around the start of summer. So as you can see, he's got casting beds in place, tilt wall panels are in progress. Storm uh, has been, uh, storm, storm to, uh, <coughs> drainage structures are in, or are gonna be installed. All right, next go so and again, this is where photos aren't all that great. They're you can for, for those of us who do this, we can see all the casting beds and um, know where the slabs are and foundations. Um, it's not really pretty. Where's the wall going? Just that? where's the wall? Going? <laughs> the perimeter wall. Yeah, there, there's a road around there. So <laughs> All right, so now I got his number. That's, yeah, I know. I got Michael's oh, number. Yeah. Okay. He, he already gave you the jab <laughs> in the ribs. There we go. Okay, O5C. Um, also, same time frame, uh, or actually, same time frame start. It started at the beginning of the summer, but this is a one year project. This project is going to come up out of the ground very quickly. So you'll see casting beds are complete, tilt walls are in progress. Um, same kind of dirty messy look um uh, if for you if you're trying to orient yourself on that okay on this photo right here um uh the left side of the screen is the ball field for um don estridge hmm. so to the left it there's going to be a whole nother section of 
play fields and, and whatnot, because this is the bulk of where the campus is going. So again, not terribly pretty right now, but it'll be uh, taken very soon. Okay, next one, uh, Plumosa School of the Arts. As, as you may remember, we opened up Plumosa this, uh, this August, and uh, we are now substantially complete, and we're working through our punch list. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but I was either going to do a presentation to the group in the, in the next couple of months, or perhaps have a video, because I think um, 10, the, uh, the uh, Education Network might be doing a video on it. And if, if we have that, I'll it'll save you all. We can do a field trip if you want. We can all drive down there and go take a look. But um, it's uh, it's best we uh, I'll bring some photos and, and uh, do the video of that. Okay, Citrus Cove. Now, um, this was a very last minute um, pull on my part. Um, we were going to do a presentation. I, uh, I, I I didn't quite get to it. <laughs> um, Jim put put a good uh, piece of information together, and I was going to actually have Joel Campbell, our SPA, present it to you. It's a minor project in that in those scheme in that scheme, but I wanted you guys to be aware of what it is. Citrus Cove, and there are a number of other projects that we have coming up. The core expansion, it's predominantly the cafeteria expansion, but it's also some of the other um, core services that we're expanding. Um, for example, the uh, clinic. Uh, the clinic or the main office might need to be expanded because, in fact, Citrus Cove is one of those ones where we built a school for 600, 800 kids. And then we had class size reduction came in and reduced our ability uh, to put kids in there. So we ended up putting concrete modulus. Well, now, as growth has gone on, now we're far beyond those 600 kids. We're at 900, 1,000 kids. So now the core, which was the media center and the cafeteria, they were built for 600 kids, not 1,000. So what we're finding is we're going to have to expand those places. Uh, in, in this particular case, uh, the Citrus Cove got expanded for the uh, clinic. It used to be a really small single room type of nurses station. Now it's a big space with three beds and a quarantine room. Um, so it's and it's more serving of the, the volume of people. In addition, um, try to oversimplify it, but the cafeteria was too small. If the cafeteria was this big, size of my paper, we took the outside wall blew it out, built a new wall further out, took the whole roof off, and built a new roof to make basically make it wider. That allows for uh, to accommodate more students in their lunch periods and eliminate the uh, multiple lunch periods that this uh, school goes through. They literally start lunch at like 9.30 in the morning and go until like, or 10 o'clock in the morning and go until one o'clock. And they do, all the overlapping shifts instead of a 40 minute lunch, you only get a 20 minute because you know you get 20 minutes and then there's an overlap of your period with some other, somebody else and whatnot. So it's been a challenge. This will certainly improve that. And as well, I mean, I, I will be goofy about it, but they also now, um, it's now bigger for their performance spaces. Uh, the, the holiday show, they used to have problems where people couldn't, they were standing room only in this school. Now we've made it that much bigger. So it's about to open up um, this month. Uh, we'd anticipate to be done this month, but it, it'll now allow for a lot more opportunities uh, to use that space, have a lot more people, parents, students uh, taking advantage of it. How do you feed kids with the roof on? Well, that's, a, that's why I'll, I'll save that for when Joel comes in. Okay. But basically what we did is um, the existing cafeteria, yeah. we took a little sliver of it and put a temporary wall up and then made a, uh, they all eat their lunches right now during construction. They eat their lunches in their classrooms. Oh, okay. But they come up through a service yeah, uh, okay. to pick up food. And we built a temporary wall and all the dirty work goes on the other side of the wall, take the roof off and, and all that stuff. Thank you. Before you leave there, I see three levels of water coolers. We do that because of ADA standard height and, and little kid elementary school height. 
I mean, it's not code required as far as I know, but I mean, I, maybe it's something we just do to hit all the different size kids that are there. Three different size bottles. I'll let, when Joel comes back, re remind him of that. Okay. I'll, I'll ask him the same question. There's no bottle filler either. Yeah, <laughs> no no bottle filler. David, I think somebody might be raising their hand. I heard that little chirp. That, that's, it's me. It's me. Okay. David, um, I'm just wondering what you're doing about the media center since that's undersized also. Uh, I'll let Joel speak to it. I'm, I, I don't believe we actually had um, improvements on this. I think they got a new, uh, their, their media center got new furniture upgrades. So I, I um, let, let me get, let me get back on that. David, we, we did not do the media. Media was not included in this core expansion for the cafeteria. Oh, but I think during the, uh, during the facility renewal, I think the media center may have yeah. got furniture. Yes, I believe it, it It did get some upgrades um, and I guess some new furniture. I wasn't involved in that project, but I do think something was done previously. To the media. Uh, new furniture doesn't uh, expand the size of the media center to correlate with the size of the student body. It, it certainly doesn't, but I can't speak to the fact that, it, you know, a lot of these media centers are going to a more digital format. They're getting rid of the stacks and opening up it opening up the space so for example if take out four sets of uh, bookcases book stacks and we're putting in soft seating so that they have more of a coll collaborative spaces for the kids and the teachers to sit and read um, or work in group uh, environments so it may not necessarily expand the square footage it actually expands the usage of the space well, you know how I feel about books, so uh, I won't comment again. Michael, you had your hand up. I was just going to remark on the uh, look of the water fountains, either that is the Goldilocks or the artillery. artillery. Okay. All right, you can take us back to the uh, presentation. Okay. There we go. All right, Dave, let's okay. continue. Uh, and, and West Tech, I think this may be our last one. West Tech... Um, is uh, it's kind of a facility renewal. It's, a, it's actually rather than, um, and y'all may have heard me talk about this before, rather than knocking down West Tech and building something brand new, but we never would have built the 90,000 square foot that they already have. We've never been able to build it for the $10 million that we have. So what, what was deemed uh, appropriate was um, basically do the equivalent of a facility renewal, completely redo, the lighting, do the redo the roofing, redo the restrooms, make them all compliant, whatnot, because they actually had the spaces. If you've ever been out to West they have a lot of garage bays, they have a lot of technical groups. It's spread out all over the place. It is, it is. It's it's a bit spread out. Uh, but it gives them more opportunities to uh, change the programs as they deem necessary. If, if they don't want this space to be a plumbing uh, academy, they can turn it into a carpentry with relative ease. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's some of the photos of, of the things we've been doing. It's obviously been working on roofs. And one of the really interesting things about the glades is this school was built on piles. All the sidewalks, sidewalks are, are remain right where they were built. Very little sinkage. All the ground yep. leading around them yep. dropped off. We had two feet, two feet yep. drop differences, which are certainly you know concerning. Uh, so what they're doing, what you're seeing right there, are simply photos of them bringing in earth yeah. to <laughs> raid down so that people <laughs> don't trip and fall off the side off the sidewalks. Uh, it sounds silly, but it's a critical thing from a life safety standpoint. Well, prior to you coming on board, uh, go elementary school out there. Oh, yeah. We saw pictures when the idea was to do something with go, and you've got. The building slab up here and the first step was down like two feet lower yeah. because the step had settled had down settled. below the floor level. Very it's very common in the glades because yeah, it's, it's a constant uh, degradation of the soil because of, uh, of the muck. It's, uh, it's like peat moss and it just, yeah. it's an organic process that just continues settling. Yeah, it just burns up. Uh, I mean, I'm doing projects out there for habitat and we have to demuck it. And the, the, the city manager said, we'll take your muck. I said, what do you mean you'll take our muck? Because oh, we'll supply the trucks. All you have to do is fill the trucks. There's a shortage of muck in the glades because it continually settles. Yeah, it holds down. Accident. 
Uh, and that, that is it. Uh, are there any questions? All right. I think we've got our questions to you already. Okay. Uh, errors and omissions. Is that a discussion item or just something to point out? Okay, go ahead. Oh, um, that was insurance. Appropriately. Uh, not, not, not yet. Well, did you go back a, to the I other think you might be because it says stop sharing at the bottom. Oh, okay. So you yeah, might still go. be sharing. It's off the task. Okay. Um, I'll proceed. So, Sue, um, your, sec your secretary and I pulled this data. We harvested it off the, um, the web. And this is every project that we came back to the board for to close out, every CM project for which had to be reconciled. <laughs> And uh, it shows you all of the um, descriptions of the projects, the board item numbers, the project numbers, the contractor, but most importantly, it's showing you the designer. And it also has a table for the amount of errors and emissions that have been uh, recorded on those projects. Um, it was my job to make sure that the um, CCUA logs and change order logs were accurate and always showed how much the errors and emissions are. So I went and added those things up and put them into columns. This is the sum of errors and omissions for it, what looks like 30 or 40 projects, perhaps. What do you say? And our standard of care in our board policy is 1%. And you can see that we're doing a great job if you look at this data, because the worst we got was one third of that on this project. It was um, lives level of it was spady and a renovation project but that's very low uh, in itself so you can see from this data that um, we're picking good contractors we're picking good designers the errors and emissions are not invisible we are watching them and to keeping track of them and if they're egregious we absolutely will bring them to the to the designer and the contractor um, but i think this really shows that we're doing a good job here yeah, this is very well done. And this just in a, in a snapshot just eliminates a lot of our comments where we go, oh my God, and you know, it's so much money and they screwed up so badly. And so, so, okay, no, it doesn't even come to the level of the policy. I would suggest on any time that we get uh, a closeout that you include this document as part of the closeout so that we can always look at, uh, okay, we're closing out SD Spady and we had this change order because of the architect. You can look and say, okay. You would like us to calculate the percent of errors and emissions on a per project basis? No, no, no. You can just insert this form. Like if you were giving us a closeout of Spady, uh -huh. you would just include this whole document with that document so that we would be able to see if we're going to complain about the architect's omissions or errors. We can look at this form and go, okay, I'll shut up. It didn't, it didn't even come close to our level of threshold. I can absolutely do that. Any questions on the tracking and reporting of errors and emissions? David? Go back. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's Virginia. I just like to compliment you, Jim. That was wonderful information. Oh, thank you very and, much. And, and, and I do agree we need to keep it going. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on errors and emissions? Okay. Seeing none. Next item. <laughs> That's Virginia. That's Virginia. Uh, board waiver. Uh, yes. Okay. So back to here. Yes, Virginia. I move that we enter a waiver so that our board chair is eligible to serve again. I second it. Uh, any any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I want to nominate Michael since he came in with. I, I've never met him before, but I just figured I would. This is not. A, this is not a nomination. Oh, that's at the January meeting. Oh, the board policy basically states that there's a four-year term limit on the chair position, unless on the court policy, the court committee asks the board to allow a waiver for the existing chair, whether it's me or anybody else, to be able to run in January. Okay. And so all this is doing is saying that you you agree you want the board to authorize the waiver to allow me because I'm the current chair to be part of the election process in January. Other than that, I would okay. not be even considered. Okay. And let me just say, uh, David, you're doing a great job, and this is being done not just because you're the current chair, but because you have and you a 
wonderful effort. You pay attention to detail. You keep us moving forward. Um, so I, I do appreciate the thought, but you know, I've got enough things on my plate and David, you're doing a great job. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Actually, I, I was referring to this one. Oh, that mic? Is this mic? I, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mr. Gilfin. I was referring to the other Michael. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so now it says David stinks. <laughs> yeah, now he's going to vote against the paper. No, I don't want that guy there. All right, so we still have to vote, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Vote unanimous? Yes. <laughs> Any opposed? Anybody online opposed? Okay, then the Cork has voted to ask the board for a waiver of the chair position. Thank you. All right. Um, you gave us Citrus Cove. Approval of minutes. Anyone with issues on minutes? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Virginia. Um, there were three. Um, first was the attendance uh, on the on the sheet. Um, it states how many were in person, it says seven in person and five virtual, but yet when you read the names and whether they were in person or virtual, the numbers don't coincide. For one, uh, it says I was in person when I was virtual, and there must have been somebody else that said in person that was virtual to make the numbers work. We'll correct that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the second was one Michael had mentioned about the proper phrasing of our motions uh, that no objection to go forward rather than recommending. And the last, my last comment was um, under review and set agenda, it says to request from the board a waiver allowing the chair and co chair to be nominated. I want to point out we don't have a co chair. I'm vice chair, not co-chair, and there's no limit on the vice chair. We'll correct that. Okay. Very good. That's it. And, and with that, Jim, do you or Susan have a record of who's in person and who's virtual? Yes, we meeting. I'm scribbling down all that stuff as we go. We get a digital report. From That's what I thought. Yeah. And I, did, I didn't hear this meeting if anyone was excused. I think we're missing a few people, but I didn't hear. We took attendance, but you didn't say if anyone was excused. I think the only person is Leah, and as far as I know, she has not requested a, an excused absence. Thank okay. you. There's a follow up with that. Michael, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for Virginia for bringing those points. I just also suggest that under 6.01, there was part of the motion at the last meeting to not just have that they are correct, but that the motions reflect no objection. That the motions reflect what? No objection. The motion reflect no objection to the proceeding. David. One issue we ought to resolve on attendance is at what point you take attendance. You take it when the call the meeting order, because some people come in after some motions in the past and some haven't. So there's a revolving attendance. Or do you do it at the end of the meeting, but that doesn't include everybody because some people weren't here. I think it's primarily if we vote that we would have to be cautious. Of. We can keep a track of it, but um, if we vote and somebody then comes in later, we have to make sure we understood that was a vote of 10 people and the next ones were out of 11. Or Susan and I are trying to keep track of when people come and go so that we always know you have. Right, and typically what's been happening is it will take attendance at the beginning. Yes. And when somebody walks in, usually there's a timestamp, even it appears in the minutes sometimes, for, you know, so-and-so arrived at 9.10, so-and-so arrived at 9.15. And then we will have that tally for who's there. Um, all we have to make sure of, and we haven't gotten close in the last few meetings, is that we still have a quorum by the time we vote. If it's unanimous, it really doesn't matter who's here at that point. Yeah, do you want it in the board report? So. Virginia. Uh, to be accurate, Susan, uh, the, the way to be sure your minutes are always correct is that the version we get should say draft. And then when we make corrections, you should actually make the corrections on those actual minutes. And then the draft comes off and they become electronically signed by the secretary. 
and that's the way to know which are the official minutes versus which are drafts. Thank you. Okay. All right. With those comments on the minutes, and the minutes won't be accepted. The, are the minutes accepted then as edited? Modified. Oh, moved. As corrected. As corrected. Okay. Uh, Frank seconded that. All in favor of the amended minutes? Aye. Aye. Michael, is that a question or an aye? An aye. Okay. Good. Uh, Virginia moved. Okay, uh, review and set anything for the next agenda. I think we we were expecting we'll get back some a lengthy discussion. I think about process because the wall I think has brought up an issue about process more than anything else, mm -hmm. and, and about the reasoning for. Okay. Um, you know, we'll probably do Citrus Cove. Yeah, you do more more uh, visual image of what's going on. Right. Also, um, probably uh, we always want to bring you guys in the, uh, in the loop on things. Uh, our new middle school, 17PP, it's, um, others are referring to it as a Sunset Palms Middle School. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be called that, but that's for better uh, understanding. It's a new middle school that we're going to be starting construction, and it's directly adjacent. It's right next door to the Sunset Palms Elementary School. Oh, wow. I would like to do a um, presentation to you. I would have done so today, but in fact, I'm going to be uh, pr uh, presenting to the COBRA uh, Educational uh, Committee um, later on this month. So once they see it, and I'll bring it back for you guys next month, basically do the same. That's the three-story school. Yeah. Correct. And is the issue with re athletic facilities worked out between the park and the school? Ostensibly, yeah. I don't know if they're sharing facilities or there's a wall. We're, we're not sharing facilities right now. But I'm not arguing, yeah. I, yeah, but but we um, there's a there's a good likelihood when parks when parks figures out what they're building, if they in fact build a track, we already have an interlocal agreement in place. We don't any park facility. Um, serious? You expect them to resolve that question? <laughs> As I say, I, there are things I can control and things I can't. And if, if it works out, um, uh, we will be able to use the uh, park control as their future. But we have, we have all the other facilities. We have baseball, softball, uh, 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 soccer, uh, a, a fitness track facility, like a, a quarter mile loop, uh, basketball, tennis, all those amenities that all of the middle schools would get standard. But so we'll do that presentation then. Okay. All right. Anything else by anybody? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. Over, Joey. Welcome back. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm wondering why he was up there. I was late. Yeah. So he, <laughs> he, uh, he's your new name. Yeah. Yep. He started about two weeks ago. So you're going to have to go. You got a good book.